that, uh, of course the project was a failure. Uh, later I'll tell you more why. And then I come out, actually I start, start my own business. Uh, just like uh, those right, who are already doing business on their own. We started our own business. And I founded this company called uh, Newway Solutions in Yamaha. Basically, we focus on building an e-commerce platform. We call it a Shipper. And then, <coughs> we recently we launched another new platform called Jappy.com. It's basically right, to empower sellers, right, any merchant, connect to the top four marketplace in Malaysia. Right, uh, namely, 11th Street, Agada, Lelong, and Shopee. Uh, and then, I also co-founded this website called Easy Insider. Any of you are our readers or subscribers here? Easy Insider? Oh, a few. Uh, thanks, thanks for the support of this one. I hope that you find our content and all this well has at least contributed something to the know-how to help you to actually run your e-commerce business. Uh, <coughs> and apart from that, I also founded a Facebook group called uh, Mecca on the So these these are the pictures, right? I just finished my collection one. So these are the t-shirts for the top four Malaysian marketplace that we actually partner with. And each of the t-shirts, they are signed by their CEO and group CEO. Uh, so I'm the only one having this collection of t-shirts here. So I'd like to show you, right, to brag a bit. Okay. Yeah. And this is what I do. Uh, uh, for those, right, who not yet start, you would like to start your own online store, check us out, www.shipper.com or mine. Later on, I, my colleague, right, is outside. Uh, you can actually acquire with Joyce uh, to understand more about product. And what you need about us is, apart from we help you to actually build your own branded store, the thing is, from the web shaper, you can actually connect to uh, some of the top marketplace, right? As I mentioned, the top four in Malaysia. Apart from that, it connect you to log on and also eBay if you want to sell cross border. Uh, and why we are doing this multi channel thing? Because right, about three years ago, when we started our, uh, our when we built this, uh, we found some of our customers, right? They are not renewing us, and the reason they are not renewing us because they don't have sales. So what is the cheapest way to help customers, right, to get sales? Obviously, you need traffic. So the idea is, can we help them, right, to, you know, for viable product, they upload to WebShaper, can we help them to actually push to all these high traffic marketplaces? Okay, high traffic marketplaces such as Lailon. This is where, uh, three plus years ago, right, we started to work on. Then later we extend to Rakuta, to Lazada, and the list go on. Uh, that's the idea. Okay, so, uh, these are the, some of the marketplaces we connect to. Uh, I'll speak through this. <coughs> and for those uh, you don't intend to open an online shop yet because you don't want to spend on marketing, uh, check out ZP. Uh, it's a free meal, it's a free tool, so right? Once you open an account in Marketplace, we can, you can upload the product to ZP, you can push ZP, right? Uh, the product, right, to the different, these top four marketplaces in Malaysia. Uh, ZP.com. Alright. Check out the site. So these are Easy Insider. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, just subscribe to our new center. Uh, in average, uh, we never spam you. In average, we publish about one, two articles right, a week. Okay, we'll do more. And anyone of you inside this group? Mecca? Any? So, for those who uh, you really want to learn more, uh, these are the only Facebook group. I, was, I dare to say that uh, probably the most active and uh, higher quality one uh, because we moderated it. <coughs> Try to search for Mecca or Malaysian e commerce aspiration or Malaysian e commerce association. <coughs> Try to join the group. Okay, you have to answer some questions first before you can join. Then we have a list of admin that can approve you. So what you want to join, you can actually post a question there. You can see from the question people actually post up and interact there. I think you can learn a few things. And inside we have merchants, we have service providers, we have marketing guys, we have logistic guys, we have payment gateway guys inside. So people from across the industry is right there inside. Uh, then interaction can happen there. Feel free to actually answer questions and actually engage with them. So this is the product, right? That got me first venture into my, uh, you know, e-commerce world. As I said, after I graduated, right, I was offered a few jobs, right, uh, as engineer. Some of them are in Singapore. I eventually decided to go for a while, right, because I get to work on a special project directly under the founder of the company, right. Uh, his name was Mr. Lee Wan Ming back then. So the idea is, do we want to sell this aircon? This is not a spot cooler. This is a real aircon, one horsepower. Okay, want to sell online? And it's the, the concept is plug and play. So anyone can just buy without installer, right? And they want to sell it cheaply. Try to guess how much? This one? One horsepower? Less than. Less than. 600. A bit more. You're already close. 650. Right? That time don't have GSD yet. Uh, so 650 net. 
then I think plus payment gateway fee, probably around that. Then of course the challenge is to sell this aircon online. Back then, right, payment gateway was not common. It was expensive. Building a site was expensive. You couldn't find uh, actually right, a lot of resources like you can or solution right that you can find off the shelf now. But the most challenging part is to actually convince the housing developer to build <coughs> the bracket onto the wall. They need to hack the wall, put a bracket, so that this thing can slot in. It's just like a standing icon window unit. Okay? But <coughs> it took a couple of years. It didn't take off. Basically, it, uh, I wouldn't say it's a total failure, but it burned about 4 million ringgit. Uh, so it's like some sort of like a, a startup right, within a big organization. Uh, but don't worry about the 4 million because OIL one year make about 300 million. Uh, so today is a chunk change, right? And they actually need to invest like this, right? so innovation can continue to happen. You'll never know right, whether you will be open up a new market. Uh, that's how I actually enter right, uh, the world of e-commerce. And first thing I want to share with you, right, uh, as basic e-commerce 101, uh, the type of e-commerce, for those who want to start the venture, you might want to get to know some right, of their models. Okay? First is the B2C. So B2C can understand business to consumer. Uh, and this is what we call retailer. They are like Jasco, they are like Tesco. They buy product, they sell. Okay? And Amazon.com started out this way. Of course, Amazon.com, later on, they opened up to third party to onboard and sell. Some of you, you do export, okay? Amazon.com, right, they can onboard Malaysian merchant. If you have the right product, you can onboard to Amazon, but it's kind of strict, right? It's not easy. I say you sell the product, right? they need the certification of the FDA. They're certified by the US government now. So you need, to, you need to look at the category of product yourself. And in today's, right, Amazon.com, about 40% of their income coming from the third party uh, seller marketplace, right? Huh? So things are evolving, but I just want to tell you the basics first. <coughs> and if you know Lazada, I believe most of you uh, probably a Lazada customer or purchase something on Lazada. Lazada started out like Amazon also, okay? They buy and they sell first. That's why when you sell at Lazada, they are probably the only marketplace, right, that will source from you or source the same product from you and compete with you. Okay, take note, these are the, the, the characteristic, right, of their business model. Which if you sell at Shopee, 11th Street, Lerong, right, they don't, because they don't, they don't source product directly. And they sell, okay? They don't do that, okay? This, this only happen in marketplace like Amazon and Lazada. This is a key difference. Second is a C2C. Uh, C2C is, uh, normally C2C, of course, the pioneer will be eBay. Huh? And they started off as a bidding site. Bidding means where they actually list out product, and their intention is normally let consumers, right, to sell the, uh, it's like a garage sales in the US. Okay, where you have excess goods, right, then you do an annual garage sales to sell off your unwanted goods, to sell your second hand goods, then you make some money from that. And local one will be let Of course, this thing eventually evolved. Ebay nowadays, right, they are more and more like Amazon. Okay, same for Lelong. Oh, because they are C customers, like consumers, right? Eventually, they will evolve, become more uh, a small B, a small business. And then they will become, let's say, full time, then they will grow. So, so all these, they have some intersection in between the point. Oh. And the third one is a B2B to B to C. Oh, I think the classic example is uh, Rakuten. And they, how many of you actually shop at Rakuten before? Do you know that they are actually in Malaysia? You know, right? Uh, do you shop there? No. Okay, that's why they close now, right? Uh, <coughs> but they exited the market already. The, the main thing about this is, right, okay, B2B2C, they sell on the platform, you know, they market the platform, they don't carry the product. And they don't just let any consumer go there and post your second items to sell. No, they disallow that. So what they do is they go and find merchants. People with brands, people with manufacturers, they are retailers, products. They open a shop for you, then they give you all the tools, they teach you how to upload, you sell product there, they take a commission. Okay, that's what they do. Business, they are business, they acquire you business, then ask you to list product on their platform and sell to consumers. They pioneer. Then, of course, B2B losing model nowadays are practiced by almost all the platforms. <coughs> because almost all the platforms you can see, Shopee, like, and Street, all this. They are talking to manufacturers, they are talking to retailers, right, to get their product on there and sell. Oh, they want you to actually open the shop there. So that's B2B to B2C. To oh. Then you have O2O. <coughs> O2O uh, mainly means, right, uh, online to offline. So why online to offline? Because online, uh, you can easily, right, pay, add to card, make payment via credit card or internet bank transfer. 
but for whatever product or services that you buy, you have to exchange it offline. So one good example is you go to Groupon, okay, they're the pioneer of this model, you buy vouchers, but you cannot, you know, the vouchers don't just like just ship to you. Even they ship to you also, you want to get the product or services for massage, for your car wash, you have to actually go to an offline shop to redeem it. Okay? So of course uh, today is right, anyone still uh, buy from site like Groupon? They are no longer any group one also. Okay? In fact, they have been acquired by Faith, and Faith now is focusing on Faith Pay. So, we are talking about this already, it happened not too long ago only. Huh? That's how fast the internet is changing. And then for the fifth one, Shopee. Uh, how many of you are currently shopping from Shopee? You, what do you buy? You know? Speakers. Right? So, Shopee is, right, uh, is mobile first. What does it mean? Because when Shopee started, right, you just treated them like a C2C marketplace. But they don't have a website right? when they start. They only have an app. You go to their website, they'll ask you to download their app. Okay? And everything they design happens within one app. It means when you download the app, right, you buy things, you buy products as a consumer, and you can easily shoot photos and list up products to sell also. So the seller and buyer interface right, are within a single app. Okay? And they do subsidize. Okay? So they actually partner with Posaju. If you use and sell on Shopee, you are you qualify for Posaju and uh, you can actually enjoy right uh, free shipping. Okay? Sending to the customer. So it was a great advantage. Huh? But the key thing for Shopee is right, it's mobile first. And then later they even build up features like chatting. Just happen within the Shopee app itself. Uh, so it's a very powerful tool so because they focus all the R and D right or giving you the best buying and selling experience in mobile. Okay, and that's where they are leading. Right? Okay. So the next model, uh, which will be the latest model, and I think this is very, very important if you're selling stuff, is what we call a new retail. Of course, new retail is another name for omni-channel. And this new retail name, right, is coined by Alibaba uh, Chairman Jack Ma. Huh? And actually, what is new retail? Just think about this, okay? If you are a business now, you will be selling products to consumers, you want to reach out to your customers. Where will you be selling nowadays? Think about it. In the future, in fact now, every business, in my opinion, first, you have your own branded online store. Okay? You promote your own brand one, your own branding name, uh, your store name. Second, you will probably sell at one or multiple marketplace. Why? Because marketplace, right, is where your customers shop also. Marketplace, they have skill. Okay, so you, you can find, right, a dominant marketplace is almost every market one. And when, when I say dominant, at least have to have a 30% of the market share. Okay, so from the way it actually evolved, you look at it, right, uh, the high chances one that will take me in this market, I think is uh, Lazada, Shopee, uh, 11th Street. Okay, these are higher traffic. And you have to actually continue right, to actually pump investment. Oh, uh, not an easy game. And then you will have one shop or multiple shops. Okay? You will go where your consumer shop. Why? Uh, the fact is, right, based on our Easy Insider stats, right, um, Malaysia e commerce sales, right, as of I think 217, 218, is about 5% of total retail sales only. 5%. Then let's talk about US, let's talk about uh, uh, China. None of them exceed 20% yet. None of them. As big as they are. So it means what? 80% of the consumers, right, buying still happen offline. Okay? And why? I give you an example, a very simple one. I have a friend, Christy Ng. He actually, right, he has been selling shoes, uh, Christian.com, or some of the ladies, right? Uh, for years already, online. Then when she opened a shop in, I think, first shop in a while time, okay, so I checked with her, hey, so how was the shop doing? Right, uh, she said, great, uh, make one more zero in terms of profit. Okay, and I said, hey, that's interesting. Then I asked further, I said, what actually happened? What have you discovered? Then she told me something interesting. She said, right, her customers heard of her before online. They never place order. Those are the potential customers because they don't know that what well, for this kind of price range, this brand of online only. I never see the product. I never touch it. I don't know the design. I don't. I don't know what kind of material is used. I don't know how's the stitching of the shoes. They don't know whether it's value for money or not. 
Then these people, how of them, when they walk by their shop, they go in. You know, through our senses, you actually experience the product. Then these customers, they find, hey, actually not bad for this kind of product, it's value for money. The design is actually not bad, the material is not bad. So they purchase it, they tested it, and guess what? The next time, they have no problem buying from you online. And it, because why? The information is like that. They know where your shop is, right? And if they have problem, they will know where to find you. Okay. Um, and okay, Walmart have most of you know they are like Hypermart, right? They are the largest retailer in the whole world. Okay. And um, because I like internet, I like retail. Uh, if you want to know more about Walmart, I recommend this book made in America, right? Written by the Walmart founder itself, Sam Walton. Uh, you can find a lot of very interesting things about how he actually started his business from a single store, so I go to a retail empire, okay? And just to let you know how big the empire is, right? Actually, if they don't split up their wealth in between their four or five sons, uh, he's actually two or three times richer than Bill Gates. Okay, Sam Walton, uh, he's a retail legend. But, okay, that's not so important. The important part is this, you see? Effective February 2018, Walmart, right, they will change their name. They have listed name, right, in the US, it's called Walmart Stores Incorporated. And they are changing their name to Walmart Incorporated only. They removed the store word. Why? Remember I told you about new retail? Online, offline, logistic, actually to serve your customer. Okay? And, you see, the, the idea is, right, with the idea you can shop with us however you like as a customer. So now, of course, you have online store, you have app, you have physical shop. Why in the future, certain we are headset and a new kind of shopping, right? Experience coming in. So as a retailer, you will adapt to a launch it, you'll be there. That's the idea. It's a channel for you to actually reach out to your consumers or okay? And then this Mark Law, uh, this, uh, actually this guy founded <coughs> the company called Diapers.com. Then later sold to Amazon, okay? And then later he quit from Amazon. He disagreed with the way Amazon runs certain of his business. He founded Z.com. Then later he been acquired by Walmart, okay? Okay, this guy is a heavyweight in uh, American uh, e-commerce. Oh, I think his salary one year is about 200 million USD. Ah, salary. Just imagine one guy only takes so much salary. Then he say, retail as increasingly channel agnostic. Oh, means that you don't rely on a single channel only. You have to be everywhere where your customer is. That's the whole idea. And with a variety of method to get product to the customers. So to the extent, right, now Walmart, right, actually in, in the war with Amazon, they are utilizing their stores, right, about 4,000, I think, if not mistaken, shit, I forgot the number of the stores already, uh, about 4,000 of those stores, if not mistaken, and for those who work inside the store, they, they can right, help to deliver the product to the customer as well. Imagine you work in Tesco, and when Tesco, people buy from Tesco online, you as a Tesco staff, from, the, from your way home, you can actually take some packages, deliver to the customer, and make some money. So these are some of the new innovations, right? They are coming from, uh, you know, these are the, the retail people, right? To fight off uh, the assault from the online uh, ETL like Amazon. Huh? So what, watch this point, huh? because as this is evolving, right, there's a lot of new innovation going to come out from this space. And since there are a few years you know, uh, ahead of us, what will happen there eventually will happen here. Huh? And of course, this, this is the Herma thing I talked about, where the Alibaba, right, uh, ex they invested in it, they are experimenting. So you see the idea of this Herma, right, uh, if you go to Shanghai, or whatever, do visit it. Inside the shop, right, they have about 5,000 SKU only, okay? They want you to visit the shop, experience with it, and then they want to convert you, right, as an offline buyer to online buyer. Because in their app, right, they carry about 30,000 SKU. And they don't care about serving customers, right, more than three kilometers away from the store. They want to serve neighborhood, right? Okay? And everything is done, right, purchase, payment, within a single app. You have to download their app, right, in order to buy things. And the payment has to be made via Alipay. Okay? Now, of course, talking about e-wallet, uh, this Alipay, right, uh, they actually partner with Touch and Go and CIMB, right, Malaysia. 
you'll see that actually they're launching probably quarter or quarter two this year. Oh, stay tuned. And the interesting thing is, right, when you place an order from your app for this Herma, if you are within three kilometers, the products, right, they guarantee to reach you within half an hour. Okay, any fresh food within half an hour. Okay, think about this for a moment. I recently just read, right, China consumers, right, they are having a second thought about should I buy a refrigerator or not? Have you ever thought that? Should I buy a refrigerator or not? If any fresh food, fresh chicken, poultry, all this, you know, beef, it can be delivered to us consistently within half an hour time in a very fresh way, it's a ready to serve way. Do you even need a fridge anymore? Of course, I never thought that. I, I don't think about this question, right? But I read some articles, some Chinese consumer, China one, they are already contemplating right, with this question. So that, that's how, right, uh, uh, I would say their consumers, right, actually adapt to the e-commerce and mobile commerce. China is even more advanced than US. Something you have to understand. Huh? China is even more advanced than US. So, uh, that's why they have this thing, right? Why will they experiment here? Eventually, it will become a model, a business model that will be exported out, right, from China to other parts of the world. Or oh, you'll see all this happen. Huh? So pay, pay attention to the trend. And I think from example like this, you can probably right, experiment, you know, uh, how you want to actually take on this new retail approach as well. Or oh, you give you some pointers. So let's talk about e-commerce current state in Malaysia. Huh? I uh, just want you to understand a bit about Malaysia e-commerce market condition. So this one, uh, can you recognize this print? Yep, Taylor's Lakeside campus. Yeah. Yep, Taylor's Lakeside campus. Yeah. Right. Anyone of you study there, graduated there? No. Huh? So guess how many parcels are shipped in a day? I don't have the latest figure, but this is 2015. So about two, three years ago. How many parcels are shipped in per day? Any guess? No guess? Uh, maybe Po Saju can provide us a little step. <laughs> uh, a little Bala can tell us. Uh. But about, about two, three years ago, 215, we were told about 700 parcels daily. Okay? So what does it mean? Okay, don't tell me what's inside the parcel because I don't know. Well, obviously I can tell you, right, these young people, these are young students, right, they are buying stuff online. And when they are buying stuff online, they might be buying from social media, Instagram, via PM. Okay, that's quite norm, I would say still a big chunk, right, of Malaysia, how Malaysia consumers buy. They will buy from marketplaces because they got deal, they got coupon, right. Uh, they probably will buy from online store. 700 parcels. And I'm not surprised if today, right, it's double the amount, or even more. Okay? And in fact, you come, you see Shopee when they come to Malaysia, right, they do something very smart. They actually go to every school, right, to promote Shopee. They ask them to download app. They encourage them to sell their uh, second-hand stuff. They don't want to make some money. And at the same time, they can buy discounted goods there. That's how they grow their user bit. Okay? And if you are not studying and, you know, you're probably not aware of this. Uh, this uh, there's a lot of offline activity actually go on, right? To, to grow their user base, to capture the uh, new type of young consumers, right, that uh, I think every retailer we want to uh, capture a price, capture a slice of. Uh. And in order to understand the future better, right, let's, let's take a look at actually what happened uh, in the uh, e-commerce history of Malaysia. Uh. This is a not too complete one, uh, but it will give you a glimpse because we can divide it into three phases. Okay. First is the wave one, ethical wave. And Asia actually launched in 201, right? The legendary story is Tony Fernandez bought the uh, airline for one ringgit. But I think, uh, of course, in depth for about 50 million, if not mistaken. Oh. And why this is this important? Because when Asia launched, right, the only way for you to actually purchase tickets from Asia is one online. Okay? There's no agent, there's no counter for you to walk to. So how do they change your behavior? Because we are so acquaintance right, with the way of actually we purchase an line ticket. We go over the counter, right? We get help, we call for agency. Agency don't sell that thing also. So we are priced. Cheap price. That's how Amazon started also. 
When my loan started in 1995-96, selling books, they understand, right, in order to change consumer behavior, they use price. Every single book, even new, newly published one, they sell at a 30%, 40% discount. And it gives you an economic motivation, right, to change your behavior. That's why it's no surprise when you now you talk about everything, uh, buying online, what you think about cheap price first. Right, because low price, right, drive consumer behavior changes. Uh, uh, people are willing to try. Uh, uh, and second wave, right, come about 10 years later. And why we say this second wave for the deal side clones, right, is very important. Because during the height and peak of it, there are about more than uh, 100, right, uh, this group selling side, right, in Malaysia. And now, today, uh, just seven years later, zero. Zero. Because why? The last standing one group on already become faith. And now they're focusing on faith. faith. So it's totally gone, just in a short span of time. And these deal side clones is the first time ever where a lot of merchants, a lot of uh, wholesaler, a lot of manufacturers, they start see first hand. Right? Malaysian merchants actually purchase stuff online. Before that, if you go and talk to them, ask them to do e-commerce or whatever, they will almost right, they will tell you, nobody will buy my products online. Right? Confirm because they cannot see, they cannot touch it. But from this, they start from buying vouchers to buying buffet vouchers. Some hotels vouchers, right, when they when they go for uh, the group deal, they sold about, I think, 12, 13,000 pieces vouchers. This is no joke, huh? there's a big amount involved. And in fact, during this period of time, payment gateway company like iPay, like MoPay, right, uh, start to kick, start to enjoy their fast growth track, okay? Because before this, all are smaller size, smaller volume, right, or even a brand they sell their site, they don't have much purchase volume, okay? And payment gateway company, they actually rely on transaction volume, right, to make money. But after this, their volume, boost. Oh, that's why we cited this period, right, as a very important one. And after this, the merchant, right, you tell them, uh, they won't tell you my things cannot sell online, or nobody will buy online already. Instead, right, merchant and seller start to adopt it. So this is common thing, how should I start? Where can I start? What kind of people should I hire? Right? Or what kind of tools, right, website, shopping cart should I use? They ask questions like this, or what kind of courier providers, right, they can help me to ship my products, Saba Sarawa, is there if that's your target market? Oh, there's a change. And the third one is the marketplace better. Uh, I think it's still happening uh, nowadays, but eventually the market, right, for Malaysia size, probably will have two or maximum three, right, established players only, right? And I don't see any newcomer coming into this space in 218, okay? Because this is a very, very brutal pattern. And why we call it a marketplace pattern? Because first thing, without money, you can forget about it, okay? And secondly, with money, you have to build a very capability to actually enter this space. And then when, when I mention money, right, I'm not talking about even a few million ringgit. I'm talking about, uh, you know, I, I give you an example. Let's say 11th Street. Anyone of you selling that? 11th Street? Anyone? But any cu customer of 11th Street? All right. So to, to run 11th Street one year, okay, you guess how much you need? About 200 people. In uh, When they started here, 215 to 216. Guess how much? Just to run the company, plus AMP, everything. So it's about 75 million ringgit. Yeah. That's how much required for one year right, operating cost just to run the company. And obviously a big chunk of the budget right, goes to AMP, right, apart from the salary. So you're not talking about you go and raise a fund, a few million ringgit, which is uh, very successful by any means. If you talk about seed fund uh, for a startup, you can run one. It doesn't work that way, okay? That's why it's very brutal game. And you look at like Shopee, uh, Lazada now, all these, uh, they have heavy backers right at the back. Oh, so they'll continue to actually attack this market until they become the dominant players. Oh, then they, can, they do things like subsidize, which if you don't have money again, you can't do. Oh, okay. And of course, um, these are the, some of the other marketplaces. Uh, uh, just a quick one, let's say lock on, my Xinjiu one. If you want to target, uh, Mainly, right, uh, Chinese-based uh, consumers can consider to actually onboard and sell a product while lock on. And you have Go Shop. Anyone purchase something from Go Shop before? Go Shop is a TV shopping, uh, and I think they did very well. 
uh, because they localize all the content. They localize all the content and they put up uh, local uh, stars, right? And they, they actually define and bring in products that can sell well in local market only. And very different from marketplace, TV shopping normally focus on much lesser SKU. And in one single SKU, they can do a couple of million ringgit. So their strategy is different, right? They aim for one single product, they sell a lot. Okay, compared to when you go to marketplace, they give you a lot of choice. Hope that hopefully you can search for the list of uh, SKU, right? You can find, then you can check out and buy from them. Then you have 11th Street, uh, just I like talked about, and Gen 5. Uh, Gen 5 uh, was a player because now uh, they are no longer uh, exist. Basically, the investor uh, don't put in more money. Uh. As I say, even as strong as Gen 5, I think we estimated they burn about 50 to 60 million ringgit. Okay? Yeah, about that amount. And even a bank owner, they cannot tahan. Right? <laughs> the, serious. Uh, the, the idea is after you burn so much money, what makes you stand out from the competition? Right? And consumers, they don't care. They see subsidized, they go and grab a deal. But will they come back to buy from you again? Obviously, it will be decided by a lot of other factors, uh, not just price alone. And if you cannot differentiate yourself out, just, just remember, as strong funded by Gen5 by, and backed by, you know, uh, one of the richest guys in Malaysia, uh, you probably can't make a business case out of it. Uh. And there are some other, like, you know, uh, Shopee, okay? Uh, definitely, you someone you want to watch, uh, because they just, uh, they are... This is, they just went listed, okay? And you search for the listed in, uh, it should be NASDAQ, uh, under the name SEA. And CJ Wild Shop, which is the TV uh, shopping channel operated by Media Prima Group, okay? Basically, they want to become a competitor to Go Shop. And you have Shopu. Shopu is operated by uh, AOT, that's Go uh, Okay? So, roughly know, right, who are some of the players in the market. And you look at, uh, we take a poor look, right, at the major retailer of Malaysia, right? Um, we calculate about 60% of them already have an online store or an official store inside of the marketplace already. Okay? And you will see this trend continue more. So obviously, offline shop, they have a need to go online store, but it's not without challenge. Uh, some of them, they are doing quite okay, uh, but most of them, uh, there are a lot of improvement and integration work to be done. Okay. And these are some of the things, you know, again, uh, 2151, one. later I will share with the latest one, the 2171, one. what's happening in the uh, local market. Uh, we just use uh, whatever published data, like available uh, by Lazada as a benchmark. You look at 2115, uh, what is the top selling products in Lazada? Diapers. How many of you actually buy diapers online? Huh? Family men? <coughs> women? Right. Why you buy the diapers online? It's cheap. And they subsidize it. Okay? And it's power bank. Okay? Obviously, these are one of the top selling items still. Uh, when it comes to their recent double eleven event. Shake and take brander. Uh, one of my customers make a few million ringgit out of this product. Because he brought in this product first. Uh, but this is 215. Now, I don't, I'm not sure whether it still sells well. Food container, USB drive. Uh, this is a bag of 215 data. And let's look at some of the trends they share back in 215. Again, this doesn't reflect the current situation uh, because a lot of things can change in one, two years' time, uh, especially in terms of internet. And when you think, right, a majority of Lazada customers are coming from Cranberry, the answer is no. In fact, more than 80% they are coming from outside Cranberry. Okay, that's one thing you gotta know. And category shift. And uh, obviously, category shift is based on um, the consumer behavior change. You know, one of the shift, they shift to all these fashion, automated, sport and loss, plus watch. Um, because Lazada, right, uh, they found their database of consumers, right, more and more comprises of family members, right? Okay? And if you talk about the most important category, I think Lazada and Shopee will focus on promoting. It will be the grocery category this year. Uh, you see them work with uh, all these consumer goods, right, uh, to bring you more, uh, I would say, foods, canned foods, Milo, all this stuff. And more than 50% of Lazada customers are more than 30 years old. Uh, 
and probably probably get married already. That's why you'll see all these are aligned apart from the infant formula diaper as well. And back in 2015, I remember when they say their diapers was the top selling product, they claim they already have 5% of racial diaper market. 5%. Now not sure. Okay? They claim they already have 5%. Huh? And then mobile first shopper. Huh? So obviously this is driven by again subsidy one. Because if you notice you are a frequent Lazada shopper, uh, they give vouchers only on app purchases. Uh, this is how they want to drive you more to mobile. Why? Because they know that you're probably not sitting in front of a computer all the time, but your handphone is with you all the time. They want you to download your, the app, and they want you to be able to search any products, right? When you actually survey a product offline store, and you find a product, they want you to actually buy it. Okay, there are reasons, right, they, why they want to subsidize your app sales, right? They want their, their app, right, to be installed on your phone. And they want to you use it. And they keep enhancing on it. Okay, so, uh, obviously this strategy works and works very well. Huh? So let's take a look at some of the latest statistics uh, happening this year. Right? Number 11 day, anyone shop on that day? Uh, does it get you excited? Do you get a good deal? Huh? And Lazada claim, right, they do about 123 million. And this is across Lazada South Asia. Oh, just for info, Lazada apart from Malaysia, they are in Singapore, Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Philippines, right? Six countries, South Asia. Shopee, they are in all these South Asia countries plus Taiwan. Okay, so Shopee foothold, right, extend to Taiwan. And they, they claim they sold about 6.5 million items. These are all within 24 hours. Oh. And you see, their subsidy product, program does work. More than 70% orders right, are placed on mobile only. Okay? That's huge. And they actually do triple times right, the 216 result in terms of GMV. Huh? And at the peak, right, they are receiving 1,400 orders per minute. Oh, that's for Lazada. So imagine this double eleven day is actually right invented by Alibaba Tapa. Try guess right in one second how many orders they are taking in during peak. That's China. Okay. The number is one hundred seventy thousand orders per second coming in. Yeah, and don't compare ourselves to that. No, just to give you a dream, right? Because their number is obviously huge. Huh? Yeah, their middle class alone, right, is ten times our Malaysian population. Huh? so don't compare. Otherwise, you will feel very really demotivated. Huh? <laughs> don't do that. Okay. And let's look at Lazada Malaysia. Let's zoom in. Oh, this is our country. Let's look at what are the interesting things that actually they sell well. Again, it might give you some green. Huh? Uh, the top three category. See, grocery, baby toy, electronic. Huh? Uh, Lazada has always been doing well on the electronic one, oh, since they were. And the top three products people buy during that day. Um, Petronas fuel card. Okay, so it's basically buying cash. Huh? You know, everyone needs to pump petrol as long as you have cars or vehicles. The Milo 2.2 kilo. Okay, uh, obviously it's cheap, right? I'm not too sure why 2.2 kilo, why not 2 kilo or why, I'm not sure. This one. <laughs> then, Penang Power Banks. Uh, this one I want to buy also, but so already. It's for 20 euro ringgit for 10,000 mAh. Huh? Yeah. And in 24 hours, they sold about 34,000 smartphones. Uh, almost equivalent numbers right, of baby diapers. Uh, and obviously baby diapers, nobody likes to buy and carry around in shopping mall. Right? It's not glamour. Ma, huh? So you will see this market keep continue to grow. But another thought for you is, right, don't because of baby diapers do well here, you go and sell also. You will die. You know why? Any idea? This is not what I say, one. this is, uh, some people feel at selling baby diapers already, told me. One. They go and sell baby diapers online. Then they found out, right, baby diapers product is not a product people sell to make money. One. Everybody sell diapers at a loss. Sometimes below you know, cost. And they actually use it right to attract customers to come in and buy other product more. That's the idea. So you today you set up a website just to sell baby diapers, you are digging a hole for yourself. Uh, so you have to understand the nature of the product as well. Okay? You don't see people sell low, then sell a lot, then you go and follow because that's not the product they make money from. They have a lot of other products, right? They actually make profit from. 
If they don't make profit, how the hell are they going to hire all these people to serve you? Right? How the hell are they going to improve on their business to serve you? That's not possible. And you look at the lowest price item, actually 81 cents of people buy, oh, you know, one ringgit. It's a tiger biscuit, 60 gram. And the highest price item traded on that day within 24 hours was a 75 inch, right? Uh, Samsung UHD TV. This was sold about, I think, 13 to 14,000. Uh. And overall, in a single day, they did about 111 million. That's a real number. Oh. Because they publicize, they say, they claim they do 100 million. But the real number I can tell is 111 million. Because I personally talked to their CEO. And then uh, he told me if they put out 111 million, people will thought they make up the number. That's why they put it aside. 100 million, oh, more than that. And then they sell cars. You realize that? On the 12th, anyone of you purchase it? <laughs> no, why not? Right, you can use your credit card to swap it. Okay, so they claim they sold these 12 limited beaters, right, within 30 minutes. Yeah, so what? Uh, you want to buy also, you throw a bit also cannot. Okay, the trick is like this. It's actually a 5,000, right, deposit. You need to purchase. Then the others one, you have to actually go off to the showroom, right, and complete the real transaction. Huh? But again, this won't stop them because they can experiment with selling other things, even houses. Why not? If they can sell this, why not houses? Can. You probably will see that, right, in this year. <laughs> huh? Yeah, you have to be creative. Nobody say it cannot be done this way. Oh. And obviously, the largest purchase, if you talk about the whole world, right, uh, world record, being done online one, is actually a private jet uh, purchased by this Mark. Guy, um, US billionaire called Mark Cuban. So he, he bought the plane right for 75 million USD online. Yeah, he wired the money online. So he bought the plane after he tested the plane. World record, uh, you can still check it, it's still home. So, roughly understand, uh, I think can give you a glimpse right, about the barometer of the Asian market. And this one, uh, you probably can't find elsewhere. One. This is what I try to tell you. Okay, again, try to understand Malaysian market. So, remember, and you want to plan campaign or whatever, uh, this statistic might be useful. Okay, think about it because this is a peak hour where people uh, place order. And the ironic is when for us that do all the e-commerce, the more popular the e-commerce is, right, the more people don't work. Uh, because we all shop on work hour only. Okay? So now, okay, for those new ones, you have not started to decide, uh, now you want to venture into e-commerce, I want to share with you. Actually, there are two ways, right, to go about selling online. Uh, when you want to sell online, first thing, you set up your own online store. You set up a domain, right, you buy a shopping cart, you probably buy a hosting, right, and you actually install the software there, then you actually apply for a payment gateway, you hook up, you start uploading your product. And you set up all the things, you test it, then you start promoting it. Uh, then, of course, before promotion, you make sure you come up with attractive promo right there. You know, you attract consumers to actually buy from you. The other way to, is for you to actually open an account right in marketplaces. Okay? Since marketplaces are, in general, they are free. Okay? Let me run through a quick one with you. No? Uh, on the x-axis, right, you have product knowledge, marketing know-how. In today, if you have product knowledge, means you know what product to sell. You know how to solve, and uh, you have to know what you want to sell, obviously, or something you have sourcing advantage. And you have marketing know-how means you know how to actually drive traffic digitally, or uh, via social media, while using tools like Facebook, ads, while using tools like Google AdWords. You have to know all this. You should set up your own brand stock. And the reason is, right, uh, you have your own brand name, you're in total control of your site promo, the structures, Right, you don't charge, you don't get charged a commission apart from a payment giveaway fee you are paying. And when one day when you want to decide to sell off your business, your online store, right, you can fetch much higher price. Try imagine yourself tell to a potential buyer, my website, you search for let's say right, baby diapers. I come on the Google first page. And inside, right, I have fifty thousand customers um, email database. And I'm clock in more than 150,000 orders. Right? So all these are very valuable, okay? And that's yours, actually your business asset. And in today, you have product and you don't know how to do digital marketing, which is very common. Assume you are doing traditional retail all the while. You are actually specialized in traditional retail. Huh? And, um, but you don't know how to do digital marketing. What should you do? Very easy. Just participate, right? Open an account in one of the 
marketplaces attend their classes. Most of them they have classes, free one. Okay, even they let your account open the account for free one. Go and learn how to upload product, learn about their delivery process, and start selling. Why? Because they spend millions on marketing their platform. And you participate, you know, as I mentioned, in some of the top marketplaces, like the 11th Street, Shopee, Lalo, right? Uh, or even you want to sell overseas, eBay. And if you still cannot work, then you have, it probably means, right, your product probably don't have a market here. Or your probably is, product is priced too high, right? Uh, but anyway, it's an actually low cost way, right, for you to experiment, or to actually start out your e commerce journey. And what if you know how to do marketing? Uh, but you don't know what product to sell. Well, the idea, right, actually to give you is, right, for every product, uh, before something can be purchased online, they have to be made available online first. Uh, and you look at Malaysia, uh, okay, latest figures, right, Lazada, how many SKU they offering now? Anyone? Latest one? Try guess? Lazada? 100 million. Yeah, Lazada Malaysia. I don't mean it. Is it a lot? Uh, actually, it's a lot. But I can tell you, right, more than eighty percent are coming from China. Uh, yeah. So the whole idea I want to share with you is: you look at Amazon, they have about I I would say five hundred million SKU. Amazon is non repetitive one. Uh, if you look at eBay, they have about nine hundred over million to one billion. And if compared to all this huge market, right? Uh, we still have a lot of actually SKU that do not be populated up to the marketplace. Oh. So if you can find a certain type of product that you know in demand, it's not listed there, that's your chance. Okay? And you should actually try your marketplace first to actually test your hypothesis whether this will attract right a potential customer or not. Oh. And then uh, the last one, if you don't know both, uh, I think the, the idea is for you to attend more classes conducted by CTEC like this one. Oh to talk to more people, to find out more ideas. Okay? So, how, how much time we have? Five more minutes. Okay. So, five more minutes, huh? Okay, these are the two things you really need to know. Let me cover these two sides, I think. Enough already. Okay. If you want to do e-commerce, right, it actually boils down to a very simple uh, formula. Okay? Your sales, what is your sales? Your total sales. It's actually your unique visitor, means how many right, unique visitors are visiting your website, okay, or are visiting, um, then your commercial rate, imagine 1,000 people visit your website, unique visit, how many people actually buy it? So these are commercial <coughs> rate. If 1,000 1, people visit your site, uh, 10 people buying, your commercial rate is 1%, okay? And your average order volume means, right, every time your customer buy, What's their average orders, right? Actually, they check out. If you time all this, you will get your total online sales. Okay? And if you are just starting off, uh, you do a simple thing like this. So that you can understand right, how to optimize uh, basically your e-commerce business. Uh. Okay. So you can put up a simple Excel chart sheet like this. Uh. Maybe for month one, you start putting up 100 SKU, you upload, and then from the marketing activities, you have 5,000 uh, visitors, and your commercial rate is 0.5%, which is less than 1%. Out uh, of oh, 5,000 receipts, 25, right, actually, right, uh, become your customer. And your average order size is 200, so your total sale is 5,000, okay, for the first month. Uh, and you margin 20%, you earn about 1,000 ringgit. Okay, so for the next month, by maintaining right the conversion rate and average order size, you just increase this by twenty percent. You will make twenty percent more sales and twenty percent right more profit. So you just adjust. You either adjust the unique visitor. You actually have to bring more unique visitor to your site, or you can adjust right your conversion rate, meaning people come to your website if they still maintain five thousand. How do you get right more people to buy? You know, from the same amount of visit, or you actually right for the same amount of visit or conversion rate, how you actually get them to buy more? So just based on these three, the optimization continuously, right? 
you'll be able to actually chart a growth path for your e-commerce business. Okay, so I hope that they are, this formula makes sense for you. And uh, I think I'm just gonna stop here. Um, any questions so far? Yeah. First, okay, we, we urge you if you open an online store, right, and you don't know anything about marketing, you just attend a call for the marketplace because they, they do all the traffic generation for you. You just start listing product there and probably work out some deal with your category manager. Some, they normally want deal that can help them to increase sales on their GMV. So it's like you scratch my back, scratch your back, they feature a deal, right? This one means, let's say, if you want to open your own store, you need this one. You need help. Alright? Where can we find this help? From you? Or okay. Z-Tech? Good question. Uh, I think the marketing expert, right, um, I wouldn't say it's abundant in the market yet. Uh, and especially if you want, really want to know how, <laughs> I, I myself, I personally, right, I don't believe that uh, fresh grad can just do it. But for me, I either will try to recruit fresh grad, I send them for training, and then I let them apply whatever they learn, right, by giving out uh, them KPI, what they need to deliver, by really doing it. Then I'll train on my own team. If not, I will go out and hire those, right, who have similar working experience, right. But, uh, but you need someone, right, that have some know-how to be able to judge whether they are skillful or not. Okay, just like you want to hire a programmer, if you are not a programmer yourself, you will have a problem trying to determine right, whether that guy is skillful or not. Okay, you need that. Oh. If not, then you probably just outsource the work uh, to a marketing agency. That's one angle you can look at it. But I will, my, my personal, I think, before you even outsource, you try to do some of the things yourself to understand the process. So, so even after you outsource, your marketing work, how to drive traffic, you will, you will know what the agency is actually doing. So you won't get BS from them. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah? 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 Oh! It's a very... Okay. This is what we do. JetP, right, it's not an online store. Just imagine you go up and sign up a free account, you start upload your product here. Okay, you can sell your, you know, uh, product sub SKU there. Then, before you push the criteria, you need to already have an account there. And you need to understand how Lazada process flow work versus Shopee versus Leo versus Eleven Street. Because none of the market race, they share the same process, right? I give you an example, if you sell a Lazada, right, they'll assign a courier to your account, right? And you are selling at Eleven Street. Uh, you can use your actually own consignment note. So the the documentation, the process flow, the 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 whole buying process are different from each other. You have to understand this. Then you can use this to manage inventory first. Actually, we look at JP like more like a data platform. I give you an example that something you can do. Inventory management means if you push product to here, you don't need to worry about oh now you have a new stock coming. How many units you need to place on Lazada? How many units you need to place on Eleven Street? So straight away you pump here, let's say 10. Lazada will upload 10, 10, 10, 10, let's say iPhone X. If here so one, so one, then five minutes later, all the stock will become eight in the four uh, uh, marketplaces. That's first thing, inventory management. And later we'll add on bundling capability. Uh, Lazada recently launched bundle feature, but other platforms they don't have yet. Bundling will able to help you to bundle two SKU or more to make you create a unique SKU, right? That differentiate yourself out from competition. So that's bundling. And uh, uh, the, when we call it a data platform, imagine, right? Uh, what could have been done? Uh, I give you an example. You pull all the order back, right? So just based on the phone, you can identify which are your loyal customers that have been following you buying across channel. And we can actually, right? We will support the SMS plugin for you to do direct marketing to your customer. That drive traffic either to your Facebook store la, to your own online store. That's first thing. Secondly, we can help you to determine, oh, now you want to go open a physical shop. After hearing like, what I just shared with you on Christy Ng, oh, they make one more zero in profit. That could be possible with you. And how do you know, right, what is the best place to open your next physical shop? Have you ever thought of that, right, if you're an online seller nowadays, 
after you sell for a period of time, your orders, right, actually tell you where you should open your store. Right? Have you ever thought about that? What if your customers, right, 40% come from Shala, right, from a zip code and within this area? Does it mean that this is the place where you should open your physical store? The answer is yes. Why? Because this demography of people, people living around here, they like your product. If they like your product, if they can see you, trust me, your both of your channel sales will grow. Yeah, this is for sure. I can tell you. Throughout my years of experience, I'm observing how this thing actually happening here. Oh. Um, these are some of the possibilities. Really. Oh. It's a freeware, it's a new product we launched. We don't charge anything for it yet. If you sell only at Marketplace only, uh, you should check it out. Huh? Then any feedback, uh, just let me know. Okay. Any other question? If no, I have to, I'll call it an end here. Uh, and then I let uh, Sidek take over. Thanks. Uh, I think on the next class, uh, we will continue to cover more on the uh, shopping cart platform itself. We will talk about individual marketplace. And I'll cover some leftover slides right, because we run out of time. Uh, talk about value, talk about what it actually takes right, to run a successful e-commerce store. Uh, we will talk more on that. Uh, uh, thanks for coming today. Thank